In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to process returns in Odoo. So the first thing we're going to do is make a sale for a product. So we'll sell this product to customer one and we'll add product Z to this. So we're selling one product for $10. So we'll confirm this and deliver it out to the customer. So now that the product is delivered out to the customer, uh, we want to, in this instance, return the product. In another video, I'll be covering how to use Help Desk to um, streamline this process. But for now, I'll just go over the basic steps of how the system handles returns. Typically, you would go into the delivery order. So a customer might tell you their sales order number. And that way, you can easily come into the sales order and find the delivery or you can search by the source document inside of your deliveries. So if you went to the inventory application and you went to your delivery orders, you can search for a source document. So you see all the source documents here. And if a customer provided us with their sales order number, we'd easily be able to search it up here for a source document. Remove some of my spaces here and we'll say source document and we'll see we're able to find our delivery for this product very easily. And Odoo handles returns on a transfer basis. So if you have multiple delivery orders for one sales order, you'll wanna handle each one of those separately unless you manually create a return for all the products at once. But typically you would go into the transfer and then click this return box up here, which will create a new record and this record will be in our returns operation type. So I'm going to click return and it's going to ask me what the return location is. So we're gonna send it back to our warehouse stock which is our default stock location for all of our inventory and I have other videos covering this. So we're going to click return. If we had multiple items or different quantities, we can edit all of this. So we can click return here, but before I do that, I actually want to create an invoice for this order. So I'm going to cancel out of that. We're going to go to our sales order. And we're going to invoice the customer. So we're going to add a little bit of complexity here where we need to actually return and refund the customer. So we'll confirm this order of this invoice and we'll register the payment and say the customer paid us through PayPal and we'll create that payment now this is in payment of course i have the accounting application installed so this is going to be in payment until we reconcile in our bank account or our paypal journal in this instance so now that we've delivered the product and received the funds from the customer i'm going to process a return so i'm going to go into our deliveries and i'm going to click return and again you can edit this if necessary and I'm simply gonna click return and that creates a new record and this is an incoming record, uh, in incoming product. So it's the destination location is our warehouse stock, like I said, and we're receiving it from our customer one. Now I'm gonna go to our dashboard and find this from our inventory application. You'll see in our operation types called returns. This is built, uh, built in by default. So you'll see this on your V15 inventory application. We're going to process this return now. So the customer has sent us the product back. We can validate and receive these goods in. So we have successfully received the goods. So I'm going to set the quantities and we receive one of product Z from customer one. Now we've received the product in. The next thing we want to do is refund the customer. And refunds are going to happen typically outside of our system. So it's going to be whatever provider you're using, let's say authorized.net, Stripe, PayPal, you're going to refund the customer right from those portals, but you're going to record that transaction inside of Odoo by creating a credit note. So we're gonna to go to that invoice, which is this invoice right here, number seven. We can verify that's the source document is uh, sales order number 21. You can see here to the right in the chatter. And now we're going to add a credit note. 
So we're going to refund the customer. So we're going to add our credit note. We're going to say refund. You can have some more specific details here if you'd like. We're going to go into our customer invoices journal. And we're going to reverse this entry. And now you'll see the journal items. We're debiting product sales and we're crediting accounts receivable. We can confirm this. And once we pay the customer or refund the customer inside of our payment processor or acquirer outside of our system, we're going to register the payment. So in this instance, I would have went into my PayPal account and refunded the customer. So now we have two lines on our statement when it came into time to reconcile. We have one for a payment and one for a return. So we can create that payment here. And in some instances, uh, maybe the payment didn't go through yet or you can simply cancel the payment then in that case you might want to cancel the invoice instead of refunding the customer because you want to make sure what you see on your bank statement and what you create in the system will match up so you can easily reconcile the two so now we've refunded and returned the cus uh, the product so there's one more thing that I want to bring up and that's if for some reason if you're product was at a loss. So if, the, if you sold the product to the customer and they're returning it because maybe it's broken um, and you have no use for it, you can use this scrap location, which will move your inventory into a virtual location called scrap. And that will move the products out of your inventory. So you can no longer use it. Well, of course, we're keeping record of it. And you can just click the scrap button. You can select the product that you're going to scrap and the quantity. Here, of course, it's just one because we've only returned one. And you see that it's going to our virtual location slash scrap. So we'll do that right here and we'll just click done. Now, if we go in our inventory app, we go to reporting. We can look at our product moves for product Z. You can see that we sold one to the customer. So right here, warehouse stock to customer and you see that we've had returned that product so from our customer location to warehouse stock so the first one here warehouse stock to customer customer to warehouse stock and then warehouse stock to our scrap location now that all works good uh, the only thing you want to consider here is if you have automated inventory valuation where these products are going to affect your balance sheet you want to make sure that you do select the proper accounts on your scrap location and you can do that by going to locations, removing the internal filter and going to our virtual location slash scrap. And you'll see our stock valuation accounts here, outgoing incoming. You may want to change this to the appropriate account if you have a separate account for your scraps or damaged products or if you just include them in your cost of goods sold then you would want to put your cost of goods sold account here and this way you accurately keep track of your inventory. Otherwise, if you don't set this, we're going to have inventory stuck in our stock intern delivered account um, that is never going to be hit unless manually adjusted. So just keep that in mind if you're going to go the scrap, uh, the scrap route. In another video, I'll show you how we can manage returns easily using the Help Desk application.